All right, guys, how you doing? Spencer here, another Hashtag United video. We're at training tonight. I'm here with the Gaffer Devs. And we asked you guys on YouTube to send us some questions for Devs, because what, we're four games into the season. We're like, I don't know, 10% of the way through the season. Still early doors. Yeah, very. But you guys got some questions. We've seen a lot of comments, obviously, coming in in video. So, got some for you. Devs, are you happy to answer these? Let's go for it. All right, first one is from Seb Mazinski. Not Seb, Hashtag player. He says, for you Devs, how much have Hashtag improved? Since you've been at the club. Since I've come in, um, I think we're making steady improvement. Um, we were quite clear from the beginning that it was going to be be a big challenge for us. Yeah. It was going to be tough, and it's very easy to get caught up by and, and judge on results. And trust me, as a manager, that's the first thing I do. But part of my job is to see the bigger picture as well. And I've spoken to the players about this being being a process and it's not just doesn't just happen overnight. And if I see improvement on the pitch, then that gives me, you know, confidence and um, for the future um, going forward. And I'm seeing that, you know, we, we've not been blown away by any of the sides. The players are working hard, they're listening, and these things don't happen overnight. So yes, I'm pleased with the progress. Yeah, it's a long process. Uh, if you haven't caught up, we are two points from four games played so far. Um, Jack, this is actually quite linked to the last question from Seb. This is Jack Treacy4. He says, it feels like the team isn't as good as it used to be. Now, obviously, that we came from a, a very winning background in our YouTube games. We were playing against much different opponents, weren't we? Yeah. Um, so, for me, obviously, it's not the easiest um, question for me to answer because I haven't been there through the whole process and I wasn't there for all of Chapter 1. I did see the, the end of it. I've also seen the footage because it was part of my job to do, to do that research. Um, and I can see why that might look, look the case on, on the camera, but actually I, I would disagree strongly with that. I think uh, the quality of our performances are, are better. We're against much stronger opposition. Um, I would think it's fair to say that you played a real mix previously and some of those yeah. were, were um, very, very weak opponents. We are now playing for points for real, for you know possible promotion and, and, and against relegation. And, but I, I would say the side that, for instance, I put out on Saturday would be stronger than the side that was maybe playing six months ago. I completely ago. agree and I can say that because I was playing in that team and that's one of the reasons I'm not playing now. It's not because he's not picking me, it's because I've taken myself out and he probably wouldn't be picking me anyway, but I've taken myself out of consideration because I do know the level. Kyle Bayliss on YouTube said, do your team talks change knowing there's a camera there? The language is better. <laughs> I think that's the big thing. Um, no. Uh, they don't change. Obviously, I, I do feel responsibility around me, and, and, and that's a serious point I make. We, we laugh about it, but it's very easy to throw um, expletives into, into sentences. And actually, before when I was working, I used to question myself, you know, is it necessarily language I was using? So that's helped me in, in quite a big way. But in terms of the content and what I'm saying, not everything gets shown to you guys. You don't see the whole picture. So you don't see all of that. So I don't feel the need to change. If I did that, I would be moving away from, from what I believe is right. I think from what we want to achieve as a team, we're trying to, you know, we're running as a proper football club. So therefore, if we were to stage team talks, for example, or, or worry about upsetting somebody, that's for the, the guys that do the editing to, to take, and they've been brilliant at that, and they've, yeah. they've made my job easy. Um, but no, I don't, I don't feel the need other than, um, it's a more careful use of language. Yeah. The other thing to think about as well is I've been really enjoying like things like the Man City documentary that's on um, Amazon right now, and that's been getting a lot of plaudits, and, and rightly so. The thing about that is that is last season coming out now, and yeah. that's the way it's traditionally done. What I think we have been great at is giving real-time access. You know, we play a game on a Saturday, the whole edit's up usually on the Monday. It's In many ways, we're giving our opposition tools to work against us. So it's making it harder for us, and I think we're really one of a, one of a kind in football right now that's doing that. Ishak Rahman says, I think there are too many changes to the team. Don't we need a steady lineup? So obviously, four games in, yeah, we haven't used the same 11 twice yet, no. but there's good reason for that. Yeah, um, frustrating. Um, no, nobody's more frustrated in that than, than myself. Uh, we have lots of issues, and this is this is non-league football, and you know, we've got guys, the nature of our side is, we've got guys that are traveling from you know, vast parts of the country, and that um, calls into question their ability to commit regularly. Um, some of those guys are regulars from the uh, uh, originals, uh, and they're the guys that you'd be asking the question as to why are they not involved if, if we made that 
decision to say we're going to go with a, with a you know a settled regular eleven because yeah. we are affected by that. So that's one of the challenges to, to juggle that round. Would I like a more settled side? Absolutely. Um, are we still very early days in terms of finding ourselves as a, as, as a squad in this new environment? Yes. So that has an impact on it as well. So we're trying to find our, our, our strongest setup, if you like, but also work around player availability due to other commitments, whether yeah. they be um, work commitments, family commitments, whether it be YouTube-based stuff. Next question's an interesting one. I think it's from your wife, Devs. When are you going to finish decorating? Have you not been, de is this at home or is this at the stadium? Yeah, this will be at home, <laughs> yeah. You've obviously been missing too much so, decorating time. I, it takes up a lot of your time, this this job. I think that's what she's getting at. <laughs> I think that's what she's getting at. Natalie, um, I have to apologise on, on Devs' behalf. It's been my fault. I was the one who got him out here in the first place. I'm sure if he hadn't been here, not only would we be a lot worse at football, but your house would probably be de better decorated by now. Is that fair? Well, yeah, it'd be decorated. <laughs> I would say, Nat, I'm... And more, more important, actually, more importantly, May because it's her bedroom. I'm a little girl. I'll, I'll get it done. You know, when we get three points, it'll be done. Well, if, if we if we get a couple of three points, I'll come round and I'll help. That's three points, <laughs> not in total. That's a win. <laughs> okay, Alex Brooks says. Okay, this is the classic question. The question on everyone's lips, even though we have explained it multiple times. Let me guess it. Go on. Where's Scotty P? Where's Scotty P? I can. So I've had a chat today with Scotty P. Ooh. Um, so. This is one of those um, situations you come across, and obviously, bear in mind, I've inherited this Scott, and I, I've not known him as long as, as you guys, but I am aware of his of his journey and where he's come from. And this is one of those kind of bittersweet situations, I think, you find a, a, as a non-league manager. When people talk to you about what do you want to achieve, obviously, first and foremost, it's success for a football club, but secondly, you, you kind of look at success for individuals and yeah. hopefully seeing them progress through, um, up, through the, the footballing ladder. And Scott has got an amazing opportunity with a football league club at the moment. I don't think there's any secrets about who that football league no, club no, is. That's North, Northampton Town. Yep. Um, he's playing and I understand performing really well with their under 18s. And he's with the hope that he, he may get himself a, a professional contract or a scholarship of, of some kind that allows him to fulfill his dream of being a full-time professional footballer. So whilst we miss him, and obviously he would be a great as asset to us. There's a big part of me that hopes we don't actually see him, certainly in the, in the short term, playing for Hashtag, because that would mean that he's having success in his own personal career. Uh, and, and that should be a feather in the cap to, to you, Spent and, and all the guys at Hashtag, because you've given him that platform. And that is a big thing. We saw the potential Scotty P, remember the name. This is a little unknown fact for you. In the first Academy episode, Seb says, he backed Scotty P to go far and he's taken a lot of credit for that over the years that he discovered him and he says a line, remember the name, Scotty Pollock? What you probably don't know is that that was take two because the first time he went, remember the name, Scotty Perkins. <laughs> and he forgot his own name, so Seb didn't even remember Scotty P's name. But Scotty P's double decent. I echo everything Dev said, hope he smashes it. If he doesn't, I'm sure he's got opportunities here. He came to a game. Yeah, he was he here last week. Game the other week. There's a question here from Shaker Ronaldo. It's quite topical because Jack, who is the new captain of Hashtag, came back from injury last game, got a goal. Uh, he asked, what made you pick Jack as captain? Um, I, very quickly, because I think we've kind of touched upon this uh, previously, I was just really impressed with, with Jack's overall attitude. Um, he's not necessarily the loudest person on the pitch, but I think he leads by example on the pitch. He's versatile, um, he puts the team first, he will undertake any job that I ask of him and that you know shows those you know the kind of qualities I look for in a, in a, in a player who, who I look at upon as a leader within the group. Definitely agree, I think it's a good choice. David Turos says, this is a good question because obviously we spoke about targets and we spoke about it on YouTube before, what we're trying to achieve in this sort of transition season, but we're now four games in. I'm curious myself as to whether they've changed in your head, Devs. David Turos asks, what are your goals for this season? Um, I'm not sure they've changed in my head. I think it was always about being competitive in, in, at this level, and I think we have been. Yeah. We have been, if you look and take them game by game. Am I disappointed you know, in, in the results? Absolutely, naturally. Um, am I concerned? Uh, not particularly, because I think they'll come. But in terms of um, what, what our aims are, is to establish us, ourselves, is to um, compete within the level and finish as high up as possible. Now, for me, that still, whilst it's, whilst it's uh, mathematically possible to win the league, that's what we'll be trying to do. But I expect the other 18 teams in the league to be thinking the same way. Definitely. Uh, casual Sports says, and he says this casually because it's casual sports, it's casual. He says, if results, if results don't improve, 
Will you bring more players in? There's no transfer window at this level, of course, apart from, I think, towards the end of the season, you have to get stuff done. But yeah, is that something you're thinking about? I th always thinking, always looking, always considering that. I think it's about, it uh, has to be the right players. They have to, have to improve us, you know, significantly. Um, have to be the right fit in terms of character as well. Cause we, what we do is, is quite different, and that's been, you know, a big that's a big challenge for anybody new, new yeah. coming in as well. Do you feel like the new boys who've come in have taken that challenge well? I think they've done brilliantly with it, largely because of the way they've been received by the by, by the older guys and everybody around the club. But I think they're really embracing it, and I think they're enjoying it. Yes, of course, if results don't improve, if it looks like we, we're going to to struggle, absolutely, that's part and that's my job. Let, let us know in the comments below who you think is your favourite of the new players. I'm curious to see who's the most popular on YouTube at the moment. Connor, Mikey asked, did you have a playing career, Devs? I played. <laughs> Tell us about it. Um, yeah, uh, so I started out as a, a youngster, I was at academies as a, as a youngster, and then um, I played for Dagenham and Redbridge in the, what would now be the National League. Yeah. Uh, and I actually then had a career that kind of spanned every level of, of non-league football. So I played from the Essex Senior League right the way up to uh, so it was step five to, to step one. Um, so I had a quite a, a, a varied um, career around that, playing for the likes of, say, Dagenham Reveridge, Ford United, who had a fantastic spell with um, Enfield and, and Barking were the, were the main clubs uh, that I played for. Uh, injury cut my career short. Um, I suffered the, game's, a, the game lost a big player. I've seen <laughs> Devs on the training pitch, still got it. Still got uh, it. I suffered quite a serious injury as a, as a youngster actually, so I still played, but it, it hindered my, my progress because I suffered a fracture of the spine which needed surgery. So, and then... Did that I, happened playing football? Yeah, yeah, it's a stress fracture. So, um, yeah, so I had a year out at the age of 20, um, doing rehab, come back, but probably, yes, yeah, so it probably put a halt to any um, any ambitions I had of, of playing professionally and, and, and full time, but still had a reasonable enough career, but moved into coaching at quite a young age. This one I think is Victor Raz. He says, what did you think of Richo's performance versus Wivenhoe? So Richo, Neil Richmond, new striker, assistant manager as well. Great pedigree in terms of goal scorer. You may or may not know, he was top goal scorer, I think, in the league above last year. He's playing a step lower, but he hasn't scored yet. And, he, and he, I think he's maybe referencing a couple of chances he uh, yeah, yeah. against Wivenhoe. Um, so, and this is what, with any of the players, as I say, you guys, you get to see 12 minutes of, of, of highlight footage and, and within the highlights, you're going to see the chances, you're going to see the glaring mistakes, you know, the things that people who tend to get called out for. Um, but Richo's all-round play on Saturday, I thought was excellent. And all that all was missing was a goal. Uh, and actually, if you, if, if you just looked at that all-round play and how he brought people in and that focal point he provided, he was the reason why we, we yeah. look so threatening going forward, or one of the main reasons, certainly. But as a manager, he did everything that I asked of him. I think on another day, he probably comes off with a, with a few goals. He's just scored a He's streamer. He's smashed one in, yeah. In, <laughs> in warm-up right now. Um, yeah, and also the other thing is, Dev's mentioned a couple of times about how you guys only get to see 15 minutes. Well, not anymore, because we are uploading 90 minutes of games. So if you want to make your own judgments about the full match and you couldn't be here to watch it live, check them out on the channel. I'm sure it's going to pop up some kind of eye button right now. Nathan Miller says, why are you always so angry? <laughs> oh, because yeah. because, because, angry. because the decorating's not done and I'm getting pressure <laughs> from my wife. Um, no, fun. I'm not. Again, I th uh, I'm not even sure I'm being particularly angry in, 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 the, in the team talks. Maybe a perception, maybe because I, uh, I've got a, a serious look about me. Um, I would say I, I can be quite intense, particularly on, on match days, but that's what I want. I want that from my players. I don't think that's a bad thing, but there's lots of positives I say as well. I try to you know, balance things with, with the players. I, I've got high expectations of them. I'm demanding of them, but I also recognise when they've given their best. And I think I did that on Saturday. You know, we, got, we, we, we drew Saturday. It felt like defeat. There were a lot of people down and I couldn't have been you know, happier or prouder of the boys for the, for the effort they put in. So yeah. I, I would disagree with that one slightly. I think the players to see it as a challenge to get him to smile, put the performance in. Like, I do agree, you, you, were, you were quite nice and, and positive after Saturday, and I don't think you're always angry, but project devs to smile starts now. Let's get him happy. Natalie, let's get that decorating done. Patrick Clough says, how are you addressing the, the perceived weaknesses when defending long balls and counter attacks? It seems like, well, particularly with Wivenhoe, I felt, it, it seems like to some people, and again, when they see the highlights, that we're susceptible to certain kind of play. But also, if you watch the game against Rivenhoe, you realise that was just what they were doing. Like, they weren't trying to play any other way. 
they were just going, for, maybe because of YouTube, who knows? Maybe, and, and, and that's one of the things we have to contend with. I actually think we've in, we improved a lot on Saturday, but again, the highlights, we, we're not the finished article and it takes time. We're not a professional football club, we're not working every day on, on these things, but we're in training, we are working on those issues, we're working on those defensive issues, um, because for me, to be a successful side, we need a solid foundation that starts from the back. But we'll get there, the boys are working hard, they're listening, but it won't happen overnight. Um, Gajanan says, are you willing to drop anyone if they are not putting a shift in? Yes. That's an easy answer. I don't even know if you need to expand on that. Of course he is. Uh, another question for you here, Devs. Uh, Balamina United or Cole Rain? You heard of them? I'm not going to lie. I've heard of a lot of football teams, but I haven't heard of them. Northern Irish Premier League. Easy, no-brainer answer this one. Balamina United. Um, my dad's from Balamina. My family, family from Bellamina. I've actually been to see them play at the, at the old showgrounds, so easy one for me to answer that. Do you reckon pre-season friendly, hashtag United versus Bellamina? That'd be amazing. Don't forget to Bellamina it. <laughs> okay, I've got three questions here, and they're all quite similar, Devs. Uh, one's from Haran HD, one's from Jamaican Superstars, and one's from Wes Tanser and uh, the White Kante. First one from um, Haran, he says, why doesn't Charlie Morley start more often? And then Jamaican Superstar says, where is Theo Baker? And then Wes Tanser says, why am I not playing? I.e. why is Wes not playing? He hasn't made an appearance yet this season. So Charlie, Theo, Wes, talk to me. Okay, so Charlie started Saturday. Um, he's had to be patient and wait his time. I think the playing 90 minutes of competitive football is very different to what Charlie does in, 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 for his career. I know, he's, you know he's, he does a lot of football stuff, but it's all kind of... Um, technique and, and skills based stuff and I think Charlie would be the first to admit that he's, he's, he's finding it quite tough ad adapting to that. Um, he's been involved in every squad that he's been available for. There have been some unavailability issues, I mean and there's, there's, there's one coming up for example, he's, he's not available. So, so that's that thing that we spoke about earlier about you don't see the full picture. Yeah. Um, but. Is Theo, Theo is similar, right? Theo was away. Theo's been away. I mean, there's, there's two issues for Theo. One is he's been away, for, I think, for four or five weeks. He's missed a huge chunk, and he'll be the first to admit as well that his fitness has suffered as a result. And, and the last time Theo played, um, within 10 minutes, he was really, really feeling it. And he's, he's, he's probably quite a long way from, from being physically ready for that. And that's Theo's challenge. Yeah. That's Theo's challenge to overcome and to, to prove to me that he can get into the squad. Um, Charlie uh, has had minutes he possibly would have preferred more but as I say it's a squad game I have to put the side that I think is best equipped for that that, that, that given game. And what are your thoughts um, on, the, on Wes Tanser because for me as player manager of the Sunday team his loss is my gain because I get to play with Wes in the Sunday team when he doesn't get minutes here so I'm not actually that fussed right now because I like playing with Wes but how do you feel about his, his chances of getting into this team? And this is Wes's question. He this is Wes's question. So um, you, you can just Wes is down there. Wes, you can yeah. just ask him. Should we call him up? <laughs> Have we got time to call him up? No. Um, I think for Wes again, all a very very new experience for him. Um, I think he, he's, he's found the, the pace of things quite quite quick. Um, I've asked him to be patient. He's an important member of our squad on and off the pitch. Yeah. I've got to add to that. Um, and yeah, I'm sure he, he will get his chance if he carries on on working hard. It is say I can only name a 16 on, on a Saturday, and at the moment there are people, in my opinion, ahead of him. It's a tough call, but that is the call the gaffer has to make, and I'm glad it's not me making it anymore. Um, fair play to you, sir. If you could say one same sentence before every game, so you can only say one thing to players before every game. As a group. As a group, what would it be? If you can't be your best, give your best. I like it. That was from uh, Golab Shreko. Final question. It's a funny one. It's from KF132018, and he says, do you fear the sack? No. Because you've got a great, great no, board to work not with. not at all. If you're going to be a football manager, not that you're not a great board, but <laughs> um, if you're going to be a football manager, you have to accept that you are one day probably going to get the sack. Uh, probably only the very, very best in the world have, have, have ever avoided the sack. Some of the very, very best in the world have still had the sack. And I think there's a saying that you're not actually a manager until you've been sacked. Mm. Uh, so it's not something that I fear because I know it's part of being in the game long enough to know it's part and parcel of it. Uh, do I fear the immediate sack? No, because I know there's a bigger picture. And I think, you know, that's probably one more for you to answer, Spencer. But this isn't just about um, 
you know, immediate success. This is about establishing and setting up a proper football club to, yeah. that's sustainable. But also, like, you guys maybe, I don't think you should forget this, but when you watch a game hashtag and you're annoyed to see us not win or draw or whatever, me and Devs are feeling that much more because, and Devs even more than me, because he's, his job is to get those results. So trust me, there's no one more frustrated than us. And we sit down and we talk after every game with things that you know we think the club needs to improve on, not just on the pitch, but generally. This is a long-term project. This is why we got Devs involved, not just for this season, because we think there's a opportunity for him to help us grow in a massive way. Of course, we'd have liked to see a few more points on the board, but no one at the club is concerned by what they're seeing on the pitch right now. If, we, if anyone at home thought it was going to be easy, then that's just maybe a little bit of naivety to be honest and we tried to educate you guys as much as we can about the, the level we're going into you know showing you the kind of progression to the top leagues what we probably didn't show you well enough was the progression from where we were to where we've gone and, we're, and all the levels in between like all the best YouTube teams you guys might watch just like you used to watch Hashtag United playing YouTube games none of them are getting close to any level of Saturday football in my opinion this is one of the highest ones in the country like in the grand scheme of things so guys the steps we've made are huge we're going to be here for a long time. We're building a club that is going to be in these leagues, hopefully for a long time. And the, the job now is just to improve slowly but surely, which I think we're doing. So I think that brings this chat, this Q&A to an end. Thank you for your time, Devs. Yeah, no go problem. and take some Let's training train. now. Drop a like on the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. We'll see you next time. Another game, more videos coming. Until then, though, don't forget to hashtag it. One day, we're going to get you to hashtag it, Devs. <laughs> I've not seen it yet, but don't do it yet. We don't want to waste it. When it happens, it'll be worth it. Can't wait. See you soon.